Hi, everyone. Welcome. Um, if you are new, I'm happy to see you here. And if you are returning, welcome back. So this video, I think it's going to be pretty quick, two parts. It's based off of a request. So someone had left me a comment on the feminine cosmology video I made um, a while ago. And I asked for clarification and I had a totally different interpretation of what her original question was. So I'm going to do two parts. I'm going to answer her question, how I interpreted it, and then I'll answer the question with her specification. <laughs> so she asked if I could make some content along the lines of productive solitude and maintaining dignity in relationships, especially friendships. So that really stood out to me. And the first thing I want to speak to is dignity and relationships, because I think this is a interesting topic um, because I connect with dignity because I am so fierce on autonomy and freedom. So when I think of having dignity in relationships, I think dignity is actually a gift that you give someone, right? We associate that a lot with the elderly and passing, letting them die with dignity. And what I think with that is it's basically a gift of space. You're creating room for them to make their own decisions, for them to think their own thoughts, for them to execute um, ambitions or decisions that they want to make, for them to have a say. Dignity is the gift of space for people to exercise their own autonomy. That's what that means to me. So for someone who is insanely connected to the idea of freedom, um, to maintain dignity in relationships is the utmost um, because what you're doing in allowing someone that space to do what they need to do, whether they're fucking up, you know, they're not going to do it right or <laughs> like appropriately. Um, or once again, in the case of the elderly, if they are doing something and it's very difficult for them to do, but it's just a matter of them wanting to do it on their own. Um, it's you giving them the respect of this is your time. This is your space. This is your way to do it. And I will just witness you in that. Some people don't want to be witnessed in it necessarily. But I think about relationships and there's like all of these conversations on women mothering men and being controlling and overbearing, which is definitely relevant. And what they are doing, I realized from this question, is they are stripping the man of his dignity. They are not allowing space for him to do something on his own, for him to process, for him to unfold to the realization, to the like, once again, execution. She's just all over it. She's just on top of it. She's like controlling. And what happens, especially for women who are mothering or like being nurturing or wanting to help is... I realized from Madeline Moon's course that what you're saying is, I don't trust you. I don't trust you to do it right. I don't trust you to do it how it needs to be done. I don't trust you. You're going to do it in a way that I like it, in a way that's appeasing to me. So I'm just going to do it. Or you don't worry about it. I'll just do it. Like whether you're being sweet or doting or whether you're like being like really fucking annoyed, like you can't do anything. You don't do anything. What's happening if we go back to the conversation on Scarlet and um, respect or was it Holly and Gluttony I think it was Gluttony the masculine experience is only what it is is only reaching the heights that it is off of the principle of respect so as a woman one of the best things that you can do is to offer this space. So 
she was asking maintaining dignity in relationships, especially friendships. So in my world, it's the same thing. The same concept applies is I think what I would just add unique to friendship, because I would just be repeating the same thing is my best friend from college told me she heard that friendships have the shape of an infinity sign in that there's an arc and that it goes apart and that it comes back together. And I cannot say how true that is just from like the past 10 years of friendships, especially with women. And I've always had solid friends. That's never been, that's never been a point of issue or contention. The only things that has happened in my lifetime of friendship is I've actually had to like break up with friends periodically. Um, And Honestly, I just find that it's the same arc that sometimes it just goes apart and then it comes back together. And what I would suggest, at least speaking to this topic, is allowing the space, which is another way of saying allowing the separation. Because in that separation, my friends figured out and realized things. And in fact, the like the friends that I'm thinking of who were best friends of mine at the time came back and was like, hey, I see exactly what you're talking about. I realized it after the fact. One of them, we're still very, very close. The other, we haven't really been able to like rekindle um, like we once were, which was fine. But I also in that space realized what I was doing that was inhibiting the relationship too, right? Like it's never just one thing. So that's what I would like to speak to that dignity in relationships, specifically friendships is just recognizing the infinity loop. Like there really is something to it. Like if you were friends and you're close, you'll somehow stay on the same path. Like you'll cross. Um, You may have to rework a lot of the different dynamics of like closeness and communication but there is a connection there the other thing before I get into the second part was she asked some content along the lines of productive solitude it's interesting I feel feel like all solitude is productive (laughs) um The best thing about solitude is I say this about the gym. I quote this all the time about me in the gym because I'm a fitness fanatic is the gym always reveals me to me every time without fail. I've learned the most about myself in the gym. So that's kind of, that's my space. That's where I catch a different zone. I, there are days I'm in a completely different state of consciousness in there. Um, some of my first like psychic gifts were happening to me in the gym um, because there is just, <laughs> that's my home. I don't know. There's a place of comfort. Um, so to me, the same thing applies to solitude. All solitude is productive because in solitude, you are just revealing yourself to you. So if you're like laying around and you're just doing Netflix all the time, all the time, all the time, that's revealing something to you about you. If you're alone and you feel like crying or you're like super restless, you're always like looking for a phone, looking for something, that's revealing something to you. If you're alone and you're just like, artistic or you just can't stop reading or writing or making videos or scrolling your phone or eating potato chips or going for a run, whatever it is. I am going to just make the statement, the claim, you know, right now, I think all solitude is productive because you revealing yourself to you and you taking note and observing that all the time is always going to benefit you. 
the word productive is kind of a, it's, it's tricky. So I think it's kind of like a loaded word, but that's, that's how I would simplify it. So that was my initial thinking. Now I wrote her back and I said, Hey, thanks so much for, you know, tuning in with me. Um, is there any specific direction you'd like me to go? So she wrote me this and I read it really briefly and I said, oh, okay, this was not at all what I was thinking. So if you could offer wellness practices to maintain peace, preserve femininity when dealing with people who lower your energy, maybe discuss when to stop being loyal in relationships, like a guide on how to choose yourself continuously while discussing the cons of not doing so, how to walk away and grow from doing such. Um, so there's a lot here. I said I was going to make this video short. <laughs> okay, we'll see how short I can make it. All right, Mama, thank you, by the way. So let's, we'll just break this down and just kind of off the cuff, but I think. So the first part, offering wellness practices to maintain peace and preserve femininity when dealing with people who lower your energy. So there's two like belief systems that I hear that I want to like kind of stretch out and look at. So the first one is when dealing with people who lower your energy. There's a gripe I have in the spiritual space and the online feminine teachings and It's the dialogue of people taking something from you, taking your energy, taking your light, taking your, you know, your feminine essence, taking your radiance, taking, taking, taking. And I see this and I hear it a lot when it comes to men and women. And it wasn't too long ago where I was just like, I am so over this, like, why like it was I'm thinking of like conversations around sex right like once again there's this energy exchange so so much of the messaging in the narrative is that men are taking something from you when you have sex so my belief is that is true in a certain consciousness. So if you have forgotten your power, if you are not in remembrance of, of who you are and what you have available to you, then you're under the impression someone's taking from you or someone's bringing you down or someone's like lowering you. This, I think, is way more detrimental than we are realizing because I wholeheartedly agree that, especially in the topics with men and sex, there has to be intelligent decision making. There has to be a good selection process. And the way you're able to do that is to know. I mean, I could say your worth, who you are, right? But it's truly just remembering your power. And that when you are in your power, you're going to have other experiences of joint power. If I'm always on guard, if I always think I need to protect myself and like you're trying to take my Shakti and, you know, and, and you over there and you're a vampire and this and this and this, I'm not denying that any of that is false. But what I'm saying is, is I want to just take a second and look at how much mindset there is around us being us as in women, um, a perpetual victim. I have to do this. I have to protect my femininity. I, um, can't have sex. I like have to because of this. And then 
I'm susceptible to this and I'm vulnerable to this and people want to take this. And I don't think we realize that that's like the undertone of the energy there. So this next part of the question is kind of like wellness practices to maintain peace and preserve your femininity, which I think is so beautiful. Like I, I love this. Um, so you watched this lady in particular, watch the feminine cosmology video. So for those of you who did not, um, very quickly, my belief is that the feminine is inherently dark. I learned that from Sheer Seven. The dark feminine is a social ruse. The feminine is inherently dark. So anytime you're expressing yourself, anytime anything is coming to fruition or coming to the light, it becomes masculine because it becomes in manifested form. The feminine is what is unknown. It's what's unrevealed. So I bring this up because we're thinking, could you offer practices to maintain and preserve your femininity? So my answer to you to maintain and preserve your femininity is back to the solitude is to get very, very acquainted with what's below the surface, to become very intimate with what is not always shown, what is in your dark, what is behind the thoughts, what are the emotions there. And I'm here to tell you that you I'm like, once again, talking about like the power and stuff. Um, as a woman who feels like I've identified my power, um, not that I like feel like I'm 100% in it every day, all day long. But this is what I'm going to tell you is I have highs and lows. I cried like three times today. Like I'm a crier. Like I'm very sensitive. So I did that. And you know what? And it was because someone else affected me and it was because a man affected me. And do you know what I did is I sat and I owned the crying. And I sat and I sent the message of what was upsetting me. And I sat and I realized that I wanted all of these things and then I wanted none of them. And I sat and I owned it. That is the practice of preserving your femininity and preserving your peace. Because even though it doesn't feel peaceful, because there's like a lot of things, what it does is it keeps you harmonious. Because I, even after all of this, said, okay, it's him or it's not. It's similar it's not I can I can cry all day I can cry for hours uh, you know about this and like and feel down and feel like he affected me and like you know and this and that um and I still know who I am and I still know that like everything is literally working out for me and I still know that it's a both that I can be grieving, I can be down, I can be furious, I can be pissed off, and I can be infatuated, and I can be in love, and I can be like, um, you know, like sexy and joyful, and then like light and spirit, and I can do and be all of those things about one person, about one job about five men and I can go back and forth and I can change my mind and I can own I I want you and I don't want you and guess what today I feel like both so it's a little bit more of a an orthodox answer to your question. <laughs> um, 
and this is a path I'm still discovering. I do not have all of the answers. Um, today, what ended up happening, what I'll share with you and all of you, is it did not feel good to be bouncing all over the place to me. And what ended up happening was I have this fear of not being taken seriously. <laughs> <laughs> right it's a protective mechanism okay and what ended up happening was I was listening to this course and she changed my whole life realizing that the feminine the expression the emoting energy no matter what it is that there's something there where the masculine can feel it and even though it's like, fuck you, <laughs> there's something about being present, being honest, and like being in the energy, not holding, not reserving, not like clenching or like withdrawing or something like you just expressing it. And I said, okay, fuck it. I'm going to try it. I have a lot of different feelings today. I'm going to just, I'm going to try it. So what I did was I said one thing and then I said another. <laughs> and do you know what the response was? Um, I feel like when you do this back and forth, I can't take us seriously. was like that's it that's it I have modulated and like moderated and done so many different contortions of myself to be consistent to be cohesive and for people to like take me seriously and so in this moment I decided to try something very consciously this is the difference. I was consciously deciding to emote and express both things because I was aware of them. In that, I was like, okay, I'm going to be seen as, you know, crazy. Like I'm doing, I, I'm not the girl who does this, but I'm going to like, I'm doing this right now. I'm doing this today. And he said exactly what I feared. And do you know what happened? I felt free. Because what I had always judged in other women about being unstable and like very emotional, I didn't allow myself to experience the flows of emotion because I had a judgment on being unstable. So when I allowed myself to do that, I gave myself permission to be that and I accepted it and I expressed it. This wasn't a mental exercise. This wasn't logical. I could have journaled. I could have, you know, analyzed it. You guys know I fucking love that shit. I said, no, actually, I'm going to just, I'm going to be in it and I'm going to do, I'm going to do both of it. The difference here is not having the emotions run you. So when we're asking for practices to preserve your peace and femininity, my recommendation is to be very intimate with everything below the surface, with the expressions that wanna come out. That is the most feminine practice you could do. And from there, you'll know how to maneuver, how to orchestrate it, how to be, you know, the ringmaster of all of these circulating energies. And the key to doing this woman to woman is with an open heart. You can say fuck you with an open heart. 
and it's very different, has a very different resonance than when you say fuck you with a closed heart. It could be a fuck you, I'm, I still love you. And it can also be a fuck you, I love myself. <laughs> but the heart's still open. So what ended up happening with this practice, I, I emoted both, I said both with an open heart very consciously. And we ended up reconciling. Amazing, right? It's crazy. This is this world of, of crazy, the human experience. This is not going to be a short video, my bad. Okay. So maybe discuss when to stop being loyal in relationships, like a guide on how to choose yourself continuously while discussing the cons of not doing so, how to walk away and grow from doing such. Oh, goodness. I'm going to walk away. <laughs> this was the piece of advice from Madeline Moon. I just took in her course. And it's funny because it echoes my teachings from what I learned from Aisha and what I'm sharing with the femme fatale is that it's not about the other person. It's about you. So a lot of the times, right, like I joke around with, you know, the woman who wants James, it has to be James. She wants to marry James and like her whole life needs to be spent with James. But if we start to like peel it back, it's not actually James. Like she wants commitment. Um, she wants to feel held. Uh, she wants someone to enjoy like hiking with. Uh, she wants someone who's family oriented. She wants someone to have great sex with. Right. So James may do or be these things, but so are a lot of other men. And so it's that awareness of, I'm not staying too attached to the person. I'm going to recognize the person. And this is once again, going back to the belief of men taking the person is always a gift. Every man who's entered my world has been a gift. Even when like my heart was obliterated, a gift. Men only give to me. I believe that. Men only give to me, even when it doesn't feel good, even when I've felt hurt or like betrayed, it's always been a gift. So when we're thinking about when to walk away and we're keeping in mind, we're not staying too attached to this person. Like I can't be associated with John. I can't do John. I'm better than John. There's more to this world than John, right? Like that's, um, and I've been there. Okay, I have for sure been this woman I'm telling you from experience. Um, nope, I am rising above my my standards have risen. John's not good enough for me anymore. <laughs> oh God, I love it myself. So Madeline Moon, one of the things that she shared is we're gonna take, John out of it. Okay. Even if John's someone you're dating, if John's been married to you for five years, if John has been married to you for 25 years, we're not going to make it about John and what he's doing to you that you need to leave. Right now, what is like me, the woman? creating from this? What am I learning from this? Madeline Moon has the angle of like theater and art. So she thinks of everything as like a production. Like how do I make this like a theater? And it's all about expressing you. And it's not about bitching. It's about her question is what are you devoted to? 
What are you devoted to? How are you showing up in that devotion? How are you showing up? How are you taking that shape of your values? And it's not a bullet list of asking if someone's like met the, the standard. No, you, no matter what anyone's doing, if John is there, if John is not there, what are you as a woman doing, embracing in your devotion to love? Not loving John, to love because you are love. So choosing yourself continuously um, while discussing of not the cons of not doing so, how to walk away and grow from doing so. Everything is always going to work out for you if you choose you. And that isn't some like, you know, boss queen like meme in the blazer with her pink Ferrari driving away. That's not what I mean by choosing you. It's knowing what you stand for. Like, what are you devoted to? And as I was taking her course, I knew very clearly as I spoke earlier that mine is freedom. I have to be free. I have to be free. I need space. I need to feel like I have op options. I need freedom to express myself. I need freedom to be heard. I need freedom to share what I'm thinking, how I'm feeling. I need freedom to make different decisions. I need freedom to have time to make decisions. And I know that's how I need to be. And that's how I always will love you. I will always give you the gift of freedom back to the, you know, dignity, the autonomy thing. So today, my gift of freedom was expressing my dual nature and listening to his rejection of it and accepting it. That was the gift he gave me after I gave the gift of my own, you know, authenticity. So this is a very deep work. This is a very deep conversation. I'm exploring some different things through Madeline Moon, which I agree with, is she talks a lot about the body. So in this case study, like the example of me, um, she works very somatically, which I believe in the mind-body. I don't think you need to leave your body um, to reach spiritual heights or ecstasy or realization. I've always felt very uncomfortable by that idea. I knew that everything was housed in the body. So I like her teachings because she actually, it's very, it's kind of theatrical and like a little, um, sometimes it's like a little bit too much for me personally, but I recognize like, the depth of her teaching so for me it if she were to cue me it would be like what does freedom look like in the body literally what shape and she has people like do this like is it big is it open like are you flinging around are you screaming like are you stomping your feet or is it just like stretching wide right like what does freedom look like somatically? And so whatever, once again, when you're asking yourself, when do you walk away? The question is not, are they doing enough for me? The question is, what are you devoted to? Have you shown up in that? And what is the shape that you're taking? Literally the body, because it's going to communicate everything else to you. This was much, this was much deeper than I had anticipated. I thought I was going to talk for 10 minutes. Um, I loved this. Thank you. Thank you so much for um, the comment and the inquiry. I thought I was going to do this next week. And I was just like, instead of doing the femme fatale video, I was like, I want to reply to this one. So uh, 
you guys are the shit. Seriously. I'm so grateful. Um, uh, two other announcements. I have a meditation for the feminine range. It's $11. Uh, so that is linked below. Uh, it is really good and really deep. Um, it's taking you through, um, like just your hallway of hearts and each room has a different feminine archetype that you're going to engage with. And you're going to activate that one in you. Um, and you'll be able to connect with each archetype in a way that's unique to you. So that's, um, $11 for the women who are interested. I'm also offering one-on-one -on -one consultations. So that is also based um, in the school of thought of archetypes. And we're really looking at like interpersonal relationships. So questions like this um, really, it's just honestly a conversation around intimacy, how you are doing with those around you, whether it's like platonic or romantic or just even you with you. So it's um, getting deep if you want some of my insider angles on reframing something you don't you don't know how to do you just know where you are and you don't necessarily want to keep staying there um you are welcome to book a consultation with me with these these are new platforms i am learning if you have any trouble please email me please email me i want to know what's not working if it's not working for you it's not working for other people and i want to know about it so I did have someone tell me that on the booking link, his card wasn't going through, um, but he was able to use it for other transactions. So I let my square scheduling know these are the kind of things on the meditation. I found out that this platform taxes certain counties um, and not others. So that was also something that was unbeknownst to me that when I purchased Courses. There are no taxes, but by law, they have to regulate certain districts. So I'm learning. Please, please tell me all the things, all the things like you can't find the link. The card isn't working. I want to know all of it because I want to make sure I get it taken care of so I can connect with more people. That's like really important. And I don't want it to be hard on anyone. Um, so if you could just be so kind, if you even want to just check it out and just once again, let me know if like a button didn't click anything at all, right? I'm totally um, open. So I wanted to say thank you. So much love, so much gratitude. Um, yeah, for all of you, for the subscribers, the commenters, the clickers, the watchers, um, even those who didn't make it that far, just know that um, the presence is felt. And uh, I'm just really grateful to be here on this journey with all of you. We're just learning together, really, and talking about it. That's how I feel. <laughs> yeah. All right, friends. Um, oh, okay. Did I do it now? I was going to say my name is Eleanor, and it's always just some thoughts. Okay, I'll do it. I had another commenter who kind of poked fun at my outro, how I always conclude with, as always, just some thoughts. So there is a little, a kind of a little story behind this. <laughs> when I was in a place of my life where I was very vulnerable, very raw, um, I felt very lost. I was um, living with a family and we had, it was very difficult for me to connect with them. Um, because once again, they saw me very clearly and I was very uncomfortable with who I was at that time. And I didn't want to be seen. And so it felt relentless to me. Like I couldn't get away. So there'd be different times or conversations and they would talk to me or they would ask me questions like, Hey, L, what do you, you know, what do you think? Or like, did you hear this? Um, and I would go, Hmm, it's a thought. And I didn't realize that I did that, but it was my way of staying ambiguous where, and 
once again, it was just like a catchphrase. I said all the time, but I didn't think much of it, but I didn't necessarily want to say yes or no. I didn't want to give them opinion. I didn't even want them to know where I stood. So I would end it or, and I still do it. Like when people are talking to me and now I do a little bit more consciously, like it's a thought. And to me, it keeps it neutral. So it's like, if someone's trying to get input, but I want them to make the decision, or I think it would be best if they ended up deciding, I would say that like, it's a thought. And that way, I kind of like put it back on them to once again, just decide or um, make their own opinion from there. So I like doing that because as always, it's, you know, just some thoughts. That's really all these are. Like, it's really it. And, um, you know, I'm so happy it's been enlightening and profound and like really refreshing for people. But at the end of the day, like, it's almost me just reminding myself, like, this is just a stream of thought. <laughs> um, and there's room to change. And that the thoughts can have as much impact or as little impact, depending where, right? Like to me, it's, it's once again, it's just all going back to a neutral ground. And then it made me think of um, this song by India Ari, the song video. I love this song so much. And there was a day. I'm not going to sing it to you. I'm just going to read you the lyrics. Um, but it's a really good song. It talks about her not being that like average video vixen. Um, and that there aren't like sort of material things that she's checking to define herself. Okay. So I had heard this verse and I was like, holy shit. Cause I couldn't stop listening to the song at one point. So the lyrics go, but I've drawn the conclusion. It's all an illusion. Confusion's the name of the game. A misconception, a vast deception. Something's got to change. Don't be offended. This is all my opinion. Ain't nothing that I'm saying law. This is a true confession of a life learned lesson I was sent here to share with y'all. I almost want to cry. So get in where you fit in, go on and shine. Clear your mind, now's the time. Put your salt on the shelf, go on and love yourself because everything's going to be all right. I'm going to try not to cry. So back to once again just some thoughts that's also my way of referencing these song lyrics because i concur with everything that we're all like in this world it's like this house of mirrors right like there's all these sort of deceptions going on and the only thing that I want to do is just clarify where those abstractions are coming from and how it's contorting the truth and it's separating us. So when she was saying like, you know, this is a misconception, a vast deception, something's got to change. Don't be offended. This is all my opinion. Ain't nothing that I'm saying law. And that's exactly how I feel where it's like, these thoughts, these ideas, they're just grounded in me. They're just grounded in my experience, right? Like like my mind, my knowing, my, my perspective, my like turn of the kaleidoscope. But at the end of the day, you guys get to decide, right? You decide what you think. You decide what you feel. You decide if anything I said contributes to it, right? And then it keeps me in a good spot too, because people I've had, you know, I've had unkind comments. So understanding that, like, you know, these are, these are thoughts people can take with them what they will. 
And she goes on to say, this is a true confession of a life learned lesson I was sent here to share with y'all. Literally, I'm trying not to cry. So this is exactly it. Essentially, these words, these videos, these thoughts, like me, like showing up on screen with, you know, my, my ring light. It's like... It's all very personal to me. And it's, and I feel inspired to share. I feel called to share. I want to share. And this is my confession of thoughts, of, of thinking, of opinions, of, of where I'm at, of how I got here, right? And I feel very supported. I feel orchestrated here doing this. Like it feels greater than than just me thinking out loud, though that's how it started. I felt like I was just thinking out loud and just putting a camera to my face. And then, you know, and then it grew. But these, it's both. Like it's me. This means a lot. Like I just shared my heart with you guys, like on this video. And then at the end of the day, like they're just some thoughts, right? So it's as deep and it's profound and then it's like as fleeting. And that is why we can have these very big and grand and like really deep and juicy, thought-provoking, fun, refreshing conversations. And they're just some thoughts. It's amazing, right? Like it, it's almost profound to me. So... Um, I had done my little outro like that very early on and I've just kept up with it. Like it just feels very natural to me. Um, I guess I could be like, like, comment, share. <laughs> so I hope you guys do, but I don't know. Do I have to say it? I feel like you guys are going to do it if you're, you know, if you feel inspired to. Um, but yeah, so thank you for both of those comments. I love I love talking to you guys through video with, with these type of things. Um, yep. So I'll link those videos below the um, cosmology of the feminine, which I felt like I was like yelling at you guys. I rewatched it. I was like, damn, I was like, why am I talking like that? <laughs> um, and then the other video with the, the outro comment uh, was my most recent one on my thoughts on manifestation. So I'll include those links below. Um, got the meditation got the um one-on-one -on -one consultation if any if anything is giving you a headache please email me so uh, I can help you uh, and then yeah got the email list I'm on Instagram right here's my clothes out like comment subscribe but as always just some thoughts